In a time and place where you can die with regrets anywhere, two ladies in their mid to late 27s are encouraging you not to. And they're calling it workationing. The ladies have been inspired by the late Jody Cullen. And we're bringing her story and inspiration to this episode. From maximizing your potential to not going back to sleep, this is the Workationing Podcast in loving memory of Jody Cullen. So I think we're going to try really hard not to make this too sad, right? We're going to do our best. I hopefully it's uplifting for the people. Do we want to do we want to put an over under on the odds are we both cry on this episode? I mean, I I'm I don't know if I want to take those odds. I'm sure we will cry. Probably. Okay. Yeah, I think I I'm going to try to hold it together. One of us is going to. All right. So we we had some tough news that happened a couple weeks ago. And our dear internet friend, Jody Cullen, passed away at 40 years old of cancer, and she was an active participant in a Facebook group that Kelly and I are both big fans of. It's called She Hit Refresh, and it's a group dedicated to women who are interested in hitting the refresh button on their lives through travel. Yeah, it's a really cool group, and we got to know Jody over the last few months, and the, I actually initially reached out to her because in some kind of a post, she had shared about her nonprofit, which was called Thrive. Right. And the purpose of Thrive was to help cancer thrivers and survivors to get to experience travel and to, to have that experience because she was very passionate about that. And the reason she was so passionate about it is because Jody had was at the time in remission from cancer. Yes. So she had had breast cancer and we shared our stories and, and she told me a little bit about her story and I was so inspired by it. I'd initially reached out because as we'll get into, Carrie and I have a real connection to, you know, both cancer and you know its relation to travel and living life to the fullest and that sort of thing and we had hoped to potentially collaborate with her in the future but when she told me her story she had been diagnosed with breast cancer she was only given a 20 percent chance of ever getting into remission at all right and she made the promise to herself that if she ever got to that point that she was going to become a digital nomad and I thought this was so cool. She actually left from her very last radiation treatment and got directly in the car. She'd already gotten rid of all of her stuff and she drove right out of town. Right, right, because she was in remission and she thought she had beaten it, correct? Yeah, I mean, with remission, it always takes a while before you you, th- you know that you've actually beaten it. I think you have to be a, f- a few years out depending on your diagnosis, but she, things were looking pretty good for her. And at the time that I started talking with, with her, which I think was back in April, that that was what was going on and she was really excited to be traveling and to start growing her nonprofit and things were really looking up but then unfortunately in May she got some bad news so Jody was experiencing a lot of headaches and she went to the hospital and unfortunately she found out that the cancer had spread to her brain and that was really tough news for the entire community over it she hit refresh because you know we'd all really kind of followed her story and that was really hard news to hear. Right. And and she basically was given the prognosis that it was terminal. Yeah. So she made the tough decision that she went through very quickly, kind of she had to make the decision in just a day or two. She went through brain surgery mm-hmm. and then followed by brain radiation, all just to get herself a couple of more months. And she didn't really know how long that was going to be. And she didn't know if she was going to be able to make it to the surgery because she had to fly to the surgery. Right. And and so everyone was kind of holding their breath to see if she was going to make it through. And then she did. And we sh- when she came out on the other side of that brain surgery, she set out to continue to live life to the fullest, because I can't say that she wasn't an example of a, a woman who didn't do that. No, she was really amazing. She threw a big celebration of life party for herself. And we loved it. We there pictures of her even doing a keg stand there, which like really touched us. And she just she kept her joy she really communicated through these long facebook posts with everyone who was following her the struggles of it she didn't really hide how hard it was but she also like really shared her joy and like her appreciation for her life and her friends and and for all of this and photos of all the killer things that she had done and the places that she had been and she was an athlete constantly running places that jody cullen (laughs) yeah (laughs) 
No, she was really, truly, truly amazing. And sadly, we got the news, I think it was on September 24th, that she had passed away. And she had just recently before that gone off of her, the steroids that were keeping her brain from swelling. And she kind of knew that that would be kind of the end for her, but things had gotten gotten pretty bad and and you know she wasn't she was suffering a lot and so you know in a way it was so hard to hear that we had lost her but there was also some relief there because it was just she was such a beautiful soul and hearing that she was suffering was was hard and so you know hopefully now she's found some peace and I was fortunate to exchange some pretty long email conversations with Jody. I offered to let her take a ride in Zoe for the day, I had planned on having lobster rolls sent to the home where she was at, the hospice facility, and it was just a couple days before she died. Yeah, it happened really fast at the end. This is something that Carrie and I have been talking about a lot over the last few months, and I know like the members of our online community have been talking about a lot over the last few months, and it's really put a lot of things in perspective for me and you know, reemphasized some things that I already know. Right. And so we wanted to talk about this with you guys because the thing that we were so inspired by with Jody was that I think she was a really good example of how to live your life without regrets. There's always so much tragedy when you lose somebody so young. She was only 40. But, you know, I think she lived she lived many times over compared to what people manage most people manage to fit into their lives and she inspired other people to do the same which uh, the impact of that you know when you spider graph that out is is crazy she touched so many people with her story so many people and and you see it on in all of these facebook groups and these women are going out and they're taking little little jody collins with them and taking photos of what is it, a, a, like a turquoise rock? Or mm-hmm. I know she had planned to disperse her ashes to people who would be willing to like travel with them and scatter them in cool places all over the world. But we, we're starting to see a lot of those photos pop, pop up online. That Jody, your spirit is still with us. I've honestly never seen such an outpouring of grief and, and love and remembrance for someone on, uh, before. I, the, the amount of people that she touched is just absolutely insane. And she's such an inspiration. She had left a note with a friend who shared it like 36 minutes ago on Facebook. And it, it's a longer note, but there's a paragraph here that really jumped out at me because we had already outlined this episode and we were going to talk about bucket lists and how to live life to the fullest. And I'm not crying yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost there. I'm not crying yet. So Jody writes, and, and I don't think she'd want us to cry. I think she'd want us to present this episode with much joy. Yeah, we're going to do our best. <laughs> we're, we're trying over here. All right. So Jody writes, here's what I want now. I want you all to each make your own bucket list. Then go out and live those dreams in my place. Take me with you in spirit. Visit the world and live while you can. <laughs> Share your pictures and your, and your experiences. Okay, I lost it. (laughs) Oh, man. It's something that, like, I've always really wanted for myself because my mom died of cancer at 42, and she had so many things that she wanted to do that she just, like, never got around to. Yeah. And she didn't know that she was going to die at 42. I think most people think that they've got, you know, long lives ahead of them, and, and statistically, most people do. But, like, there are outliers, and you never know how much time you have left. And so what are you doing to focus on setting and achieving your goals? What's on your bucket list? And have you even written it out? Like, when's the last time you sat and thought about all of the places that you want to go before you die or all of the things that you want to do before you die? And what kind of legacy you need to be wo- like working on creating right now while you're alive that you can be proud of and not have regrets when you go out the door? It's so true. It was a connection that Carrie and I had early on, and and I don't even think we realized we necessarily had right away. But when we started workationing, I also lost my dad early to cancer. He was 50. And I was actually, I was with my dad when he found out that the cancer was terminal and got the call from the doctor. And my dad was a tough guy, and I rarely in my life saw my dad cry. But in that moment, he really broke down, and and I just sat with him, and I didn't even know what to say. And I just wanted to try to help, and I was like, well, what, is there something that we can do? Is there anywhere that you want to go? 
And he looked at me and said, everywhere I've never been. And like that has stuck with me so much since that moment and has really been like the driving force behind, you know, why I I wanted to start this workationing adventure in the first place is because my dad had grew up in poverty and dropped out of high school and then got his life together later on. And, you know, the whole time that I was growing up, my dad was in medical school and then he was, you know, becoming a doctor and, and he had finally just become a doctor a few years before he got sick. And, you know, he was raising a family and there were all of these things that he was working towards and all of these things that he wanted to, you know, he wanted to travel. He talked about that all the time, but it was like he, that was, he was always putting that off. You know, it was always something for the future. And, you know, just realizing that he did all of that and he put it all off thinking that someday he would get to and then he ran out of time. And I just, it, it made me so aware of time. I feel like it's made you so aware of time too, losing right. a parent that way. And, and and realizing that nothing is promised and, and you, every day really is a gift. And so, you know, you have to make the most out of your life now and not put off the things that are going to give you happiness and joy until it's too late. So with that, we've, I guess we're going to get into the how to live without regrets portion of the podcast. Right? Yeah. Because I think that that's something that you and I talk about a lot. It's something that listeners write into us about. It is something that they're very interested in. And, you know, if you're struggling with any of this, betterhelp.com backslash workationing. Yeah, I, we really have gotten so much amazing feedback, especially in our Facebook group. Uh, the Workationing Facebook group where people who have signed up for BetterHelp have reached out to us and let us know how awesome it is and what a big difference that it's made in their lives. We push this a lot because it's something that we use. It's something that we love and it's like I can really stand behind it. You guys know, you know, if you've been with us through this whole journey that we haven't done a lot of like trying to sell you anything that's not really our MO over here. But this BetterHelp has been a huge help to me through some real struggles and trials. I know that's been a big help to carry. Yeah. It's been help to a lot of people. So if you're struggling with any of this and you need, you know, somebody to bounce stuff off of or, you know, you've got some stuff that you want to process or you just want some accountability as you start to move towards your goals. We love our internet therapy so much that we've developed an affiliate relationship with BetterHelp. So if you are interested in checking out internet therapy and finding your own internet therapist. Betterhelp.com slash workationing is where you can get that and you will get hooked up with seven days of free therapy. Yep, and if you love it, which we hope you will, we think you will, you can take that internet therapist with you anywhere in the world. That's right, because for a lot of us, living without regrets involved slapping your eyes on some cool stuff. Yeah, A little bit of travel, you know, experiencing different cultures, eating crickets on a stick maybe. Right? And you can take your internet therapist along for all of that. So if you're interested in that seven-day free trial, it's betterhelp.com slash vacationing. So let's talk about living intentionally because that's we've, we've got an entire podcast episode about how to live intentionally. Right. And I, we do this to varying degrees of success. I think that that's true of I, about I, everyone. I always intend yeah. to live intentionally. <laughs> but sometimes, I mean, we all, we all fall short of that I, sometimes. Even Oprah got fat again. Right? And then Listen. skinny again. It's a struggle for all of us. You know, exactly. nobody's perfect all of the time. But it, I think it's really important when talking about living intentionally is to pay attention to the gap that exists between where you are right now and where you want to be. Yeah, I think that a lot of times people just kind of, you start to take that gap for granted. You start thinking, you know, well, there are certain things that I, because to be clear, I think that gap is probably always there no matter what you do. Of course. So that gap is always going to be there, but there's a way in which people just accept that gap in a way that makes it feel unchangeable. Or instead of recognizing that there are like stepping stones that you can create for yourself to close that gap, and then you just got to make those those hops and stick the landing right and listen you might never get all the way to where you're trying to go but if you just take it for granted that you can't close that gap at all and you're just going to stay right where you are you're never there are all kinds of things and opportunities that you can have in life that you aren't even going to know about if you just stay stagnant in the place that you are and don't try yeah you You don't don't let fear of failure stop you from opening doors just because like you're too scared to knock on them you know, what if nobody answers? 
Right. And there's a million ways to talk. People talk about this principle all the time. And, you know, Carrie and I aren't particularly woo. No. But people do talk. But we do, you know, we've kind of become more interested in this idea of, you know, manifesting or raising your vibration or, you know, what, however people want to call it. That's very crunchy granola it's for me. It's very woo for me. It's not my particular. If it's for you, great. You know, but for us, that that doesn't really resonate. Actually, but But I do think that there's something to the idea that if you, that, that the intention that you bring to something changes your approach to it it changes the the directions that you take it changes how open you are to opportunities you know if you approach something with the idea that you can change it that you are able to achieve your goals then you're going to attack that problem from a more proactive place and that does ultimately change the outcome well if you've got an intention for something whether that's like getting a job a different job or you know, moving to a city that you've always wanted to live in. Once you kind of set that goal and not just as something that's like far away is going to happen someday, but once you're like, all right, well, I really intend to do this. I'm going to set that intention. Then you find yourself taking actions to to help get you there. So maybe you start applying for jobs in that city or Mm -hmm. just different jobs in general. But like how many people hate their jobs, but then haven't haven't looked for a new one in years? Exactly. What's that about? You know, and and like when you're sitting on your deathbed and you're looking at the regrets that you have in life, like what moves did you take? What risks did you make? And, you know, like I'm not a particularly risk adverse person. Obviously, I'm an entrepreneur. Right. But there's definitely some risk there. Right. But you can hedge your bets and make things less risky. Yeah. I mean, you don't need to throw yourself off a cliff or anything to start moving towards your goals. My friend... Jess from back home, my bestie from back home, was here a couple weeks ago, and we had sort of been talking about this particular idea, and she is an equestrian, rode horses for years at the national level, very talented, and she said, you know, it's a lot like, she's like, it makes me think of horseback riding, because one of the main things that they tell beginners is that you have to look in the direction that you want the horse to go. And that it seems like such a little thing. And like, what is looking going to do? You know, if, if you're, you can be pulling at the reins of this horse and it's not going to turn. But as soon as you look in the direction that you want the horse to go, everything about your alignment shifts. Your body moves. And the horse can sense that. And it can sense the intention behind it so much more than it can interpret you tugging on its reins. Right. And I think that it's the same for life. You, you have to look in the direction that you want to be going or you're not going to get there. Speaking of taking risks, we've taken some bad ones. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like that risks aren't always, you know, like maybe we should have researched Acapulco like we were told to before we went there. Sure. You know? Sure. And <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you that. <laughs> we, we were talking about it earlier last night. And we were talking about Acapulco specifically and how like we really could have died there and like both of us were very sick and also it was just like a banner year for for murders in general. Yeah, it's still not going real well down there. There's all these stories right now that the military went in like just this week and like replaced, like removed all of the police officers because the police officers basically are the cartel at this point. There was too much corruption and the military had to take over that city. So, I mean, things are not going super well down in Acapulco. No, and we were there right before that happened. You know, right. basically. Eesh. So you were saying, though, that, you know, after Acapulco, I, I really feel like we probably should have died. And so at some point I just reconciled myself to the fact that, well, now I'm playing with house money. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but that's a great, I think that that's a really great place to come from because I think that regardless of, I don't think you necessarily have to go and almost die in cartel country, but I think that, you know, in a way we, you, you, every day, no day is guaranteed to you. No. You can step out in front of a bus tomorrow and in a way, like, like you're alive and you have this opportunity and you have no idea how long, how much longer, you're on a lucky streak if you're alive. Yeah. And you don't know how much longer that lucky streak is going to go. And so in a way, we all are playing with house money, but people don't, people don't approach it in that way. Right. You know, like, I think that if we thought of it that way, that we would, we would make a different, a different move, but you don't get to take anything with you and you don't know how long you have. So like, why not try some shit? Yeah. See what happens. With it. You know, not in Acapulco. Not in Acapulco, I would not recommend not that weird. There. No, uh-uh. Medellin, you know, I've got mixed feelings about. I would recommend that way above 
Acapulco any day. If you want to get a little weird with it, go down to Colombia. Yeah, that's, that's just fine. Yeah, it's not a bad place to get weird, I don't think. There's lots of digital nomads in, in Medellin that you can hang out with too, which is cool because it's like an Insta community that you can just like pop yourself on into. Yeah, it's really cool. But I would recommend that you don't die stupid or rather you do everything that you can to not die stupid. Yeah, that's the other thing is definitely take some risks, but there are I all... mean, the goal is to die of natural causes, right? Right. Right. Like take some risks, but there's also ways to mitigate stupid risks. For instance, maybe pop a quick research on the places that you're going to travel to. That's one that we learned. Yeah, I I would recommend that. But then also, uh, I think we've told this story once or twice on the podcast already. But like if your gut is telling you that you need to get the fuck out of a situation, then go ahead and remove yourself from that situation right yeah there was a situation I always use this as an example of this it was actually right before I started workationing like workationing could have maybe never happened you know what I mean and what happened was is I had been out with a bunch of friends at a wine tasting and we were leaving and we ordered uh an uber x like one of the big ones because there was a bunch of us right and we weren't all trying to cram into the back seat of a Corolla. So we get this car and it shows up and it's this Windstar. And this thing was held together with literal, literal duct tape and prayers. <laughs> it was a real mess. And we were and it just like rambled on in. And we were like, oh, no. But, you know, like, listen, none of us are that fancy or, or snobby. We were like, we can handle this. It'll be fine. And also, like, the car is here. And what do I say? Your car is too shitty. I'm not getting into it. Right. You know? So then we open the sliding door. And we're going to, like, pile into this thing. You know, it's like a 20-minute ride home. No big deal. And we look in the back seat. And there are three kids lined up on the back seat, all in car seats. Well, at least they were secure. At least they were secure-ish. And <laughs> so now we all still were in the same position of having to, like, we might as well have been in a car because we didn't even get that whole back row, That's right? That's got to violate policy. A right? thousand percent. Okay. So at this point, this car does not look safe. We have not been given the thing that we were promised, that we con- we we contracted a service that we were not getting. Right. And yet none, nobody wanted to be impolite. Right. And so we all just were like, well, fuck it, and get into this Windstar from hell. Right. And I am in the front seat. And I noticed that not only is the windshield all spidered out to the point that I'm like, if we hit a pothole, is this whole thing going to come crashing in? Right. But literally every light on the dashboard is on. Like, this (laughs) car is not doing well. And so we take off. And we were, all of us, in this van, quiet. Because the other thing is, is that I don't want to say anything to this lady in front of her kids who are in the back, right? Like, I'd be rude. Right. Like, we're not trying to scare any kids, you know? And also, we're we're all aware that we'd had a few drinks, so we're trying to, you know. But we were all texting each other the whole time, being like, like, what the fuck? Is this how we die? You know what I mean? And when we got back to the house, we ended up having, like, back to my friend's house, we ended up having a long talk about it. And it really changed the way that I think about things, which is that, like, I stayed in a situation where I didn't think I was safe. I didn't think that my friends were safe. I didn't think these rando kids in the back were safe. And I stayed in that situation because I didn't want to, like, what, be rude? Right. That's not smart. That's how you die stupid. Right? And so, like, you've got to advocate for your own safety because, like, your life is a precious thing. And what, you're not going to speak up over something that could be dangerous because you don't want to be rude? And for the record, I'd also like to say, just, you know, in, in terms of red flags, if you are texting your friends holy shit is this how we die maybe maybe you need to have that lady pull on over yeah no I would do that a hundred percent differently now I never even would have gotten in or I I would have let her take pull pull me out on the side of the highway because I feel like it would have been safer than where I was like I it was not good it was not a good situation but yeah so you've got to watch out for yourself and don't let yourself don't let yourself get railroaded into a situation that makes you feel unsafe just because you you don't want to be impolite or you don't want to cause a problem or you don't want to insult somebody right you don't want to be the squeaky wheel squeak away girl yeah and and i mean like this goes beyond just you know the basic uber stuff i like to say be smart about your stupidity if you're gonna do something that's that's a little risky let's say buy street drugs in a new city Mm -hmm. you better make sure you have a testing kit on right. that because in Amsterdam a couple years ago tour- tourists were dropping dead left and right because instead of getting cocaine they were getting fentanyl mm-hmm. and there's no coming back from that no and I, I heard there was something that was like those I don't remember what they were called red somethings I heard about those too and it was supposed to be like some kind of like little pressy ecstasy pill or something like that but it wasn't it was something else and that that was killing people too like that happens in Amsterdam all the time 
Yeah. Like the store, the news is full, full of people, tourists going down on some, they were on vacation and they're in Amsterdam and they're like, woo, we're in Amsterdam, we're going to do drugs. And then you die. It's not worth it at all. And no. And there are drug dealers who I get propositioned all the time walking down the street. You want any Coke? Especially in your, when you're walking at night in the tourist area. And you look like, we always look like tourists too. We, we, so I think we get, I think I it's our yoga pants and top knots yeah. to give us away, you know? Yeah. So you've got to watch out. Like, just don't, you know, take some risks, have some fun, you know, but there's test your drugs. Yeah. If you're going to do them, test them because like you, that's not how your family wants to hear about you dying. No, no. On like, vacation. Spare, spare everyone that. Please do that. And there, there are other ways that you can be smart traveling just in general, especially as a lady walking at night in a weird area. Maybe don't. You know, Mm -hmm. just in general, if you can, don't walk by yourself at night. Yeah, it takes some planning and it takes all of that. But, you know, if you're going to go, if you're going to take a risk, like, let's say, cage diving with sharks. Yep. And they're done that. Right. Like there's some but there are at least safety precautions. And and if you and and you do kind of go into it knowing that something bad could happen. Yeah, I got a mouthful of chum water and puked all over. (laughs) (laughs) Right. That sounds like you. <laughs> I, I still got to see some killer sharkery. But to the best of my knowledge, nobody had, had died. Right. But that's adventures. at least a calculated risk, you know. But if right. you really thought it through and you're like, I'm doing this thing like walking home alone through this scary place or whatever and I could die. Like, I, I think most of the time, if you really thought that you could die, you wouldn't do it. Right. But people die while texting, while driving all the time. And people still do that. I, I think that there are ways to protect yourself. And I'm I'm. I try to be hyper vigilant about it because I don't want to die in a stupid way. Right. Those trams come out of nowhere sometimes. No, 100%. You better be present while walking down the street right? and looking both ways. Look alive, head on a swivel. Exactly. But then the other thing is, though, is that so you need to be aware of all that. But you don't what you don't want is to let your fears rule you either. No, no. I, I'm a big fan of running toward fears. Yeah, I think that you kind of need to. I think that one of the most important things you can do in your life is really like take a look at what is it what is it that I'm afraid of and really get cozy with that. Know what those things are because chances are if there's this gap that we're talking about between right. between the things, the life that you want and the life that you have, the decisions that have created that gap, a lot of those are probably fear-based. Yeah, I mean, we're not talking about a fear of snakes or a fear of heights here. Although to be honest, there are things that I would like to do that I like in traveling things that I would like to do that I don't do or that I haven't done yet because it's a very jungly snaky situation and that's something that I'm actually working on in myself is I'm like I there's so many like like I'd love to hike to Machu Picchu right but I'm not so into the snakery and it's like do I really want to keep myself back from that experience because snakes well I had a fear of black water swimming in black water at night right particularly in the ocean you know but girl, in order to experience the bio bay at La Paguera in Puerto Rico, we had to jump into some dark ass water in the middle of the night. We did. And there was a moment where I almost didn't do it. And but then I was like, I am I really going to sit here in this boat and watch all of my friends go out and have this amazing experience? And then I'm not going to because I'm too afraid. And girl, I jumped right into that water. I jumped in first and then y'all left me hanging, swimming by myself like a little glow worm in the right? middle of a dark ass bay. I wasn't going to leave you, girl. I jumped in. I was really encouraging anybody to hurry up like, and get just... on in, guys. <laughs> it's warm. Oh, you know what I was thinking about that whole time, though, is, you know, you know, that scene in The Princess Bride where like she falls into the water off the ship and there are all those like giant eels. Don't. In there. Don't. <laughs> down <laughs> that was where my mind was at but like you can't let that shit rule you it was like and I did it and it was an, I didn't touch so much as a porpoise there was nothing in there it was fine no and it was it was great it was one of the most incredible experiences that I've ever had and it was on our bucket list and we crossed that off I would recommend that anybody put that on their bucket list absolutely it should be at the very top of yours go at it right now <laughs> <laughs> speaking of bucket list like w- w- what's on yours and and I don't know what's on mine. I already know what's on mine. And Kelly and I, throughout this vacationing process, have been really focused on knocking out bucket list items along the way. Like the intention for vacationing was to live our lives to the fullest, Mm -hmm. to the greatest, greatest extent possible. So for us, that meant we had work from home jobs or anywhere. So we really decided to emphasize the from anywhere. Did like 14 countries Mm -hmm. last year. But we've done some really cool stuff. 
Yeah, we've done some amazing things. We well, there was the bio bay that was pretty amazing. We both flew a plane. Yeah, about a month ago. Yeah, we uh, we floated in isolation tank. I had never a sensory deprivation tank. I'd always wanted to do that. Right. We played Tejo in Colombia. We went axe throwing. We did all kinds of cool. We've stuff. We've done all kinds of cool stuff. So I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna live, you know, live like put some stuff on on your on your bucket list, and 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 it's about that idea of setting intentions. I feel almost almost a little woo about my bucket list now because I feel like we put things on there and then they happen. Yeah. But it's because you've set the intention and you're you're trying to figure out how to move towards that. But just going back to this idea of fears, it might just not be like black water and snakes and that sort of thing that you're afraid of. There's like failure. Yeah. Is it a fear of failure? Is it a fear of being alone? Is it a fear of not being secure or not having money? I would say, and something that I see all the time, especially in the digital nomad and entrepreneurial community, is are you afraid of money? Because I right. I see so many people who they're out here hustling and they're trying so hard to make money, but the and, and that's all they that's where their focus is. But then when it comes to the moment where they actually need to take the action that's going to bridge the gap between all of this work that they've done and then like actually getting paid for it, when it comes to the point of like actually promoting themselves right. or asking for the contract or pitching themselves or whatever it is that they need to do to actually bridge that gap, suddenly they can't right suddenly there's a million excuses I've well I've got to get this one last thing I've got to finish this website I've got to you know all of these things whatever it might be and they and they keep they hold themselves back I think I I've become more and more convinced that people have trouble making money because for some reason they're afraid of it yeah I've seen that and people just generally not knowing their worth Right. You see a lot of, especially in the digital marketing space, some really talented people who I'm like, why are you charging $20 an hour? You know, the value that you deliver is you can show ROI of $500 an hour. Girl, increase your rates. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you have to figure out what that what, what that is. Like, what is that core? What is that core fear that you have? And, and, and you know, what are those core values also from which those from which those fears spring? And, and some of those things are really rational, probably. Right. But there's a lot of it that's probably really irrational. And so you have to, like, look at that in yourself and then connect the dots between that and the gap that you see in your life between where you want to be and where you are and figure out how much those things are related. And if you're like most people, they're they're probably a lot more related than you think. Which is why I always recommend BetterHelp.com slash Workationing. Yes. That's BetterHelp.com slash Workationing. And you can get hooked up with seven days of free internet therapy to have somebody to talk through these issues with. Because honestly, like if you've got a severe fear, fear of failure, are you going to want to talk to your bestie about that? Is that like, I mean, maybe some people might, but I think that like openings one, like opening yourself up to others with like your greatest fears and how they're you know not ruining your life necessarily but preventing you from where you want to be I think that that's a better conversation to be had with a therapist yeah well and it's some like intensive work that you need to do on yourself and all of this is great stuff to talk about with your friends but when it comes time to really do the work sometimes you need like a, a professional to back you up yeah and to be clear as Kelly always says self-help is not for pussies it is not it's hard it is it is you've got to be a real warrior my friend <laughs> so suit up and head on over to betterhelp.com backslash workationing yes we should talk about living with integrity throughout all of this process because i think a lot of self-loathing comes from lack of integrity in one or more areas of your life so true. I think that uh, this is actually the number one thing that in my life I kind of use as a touchstone. And I also use it as a, as a measuring stick for uh, the people in my life to decide whether or not I still want you to be there. And integrity is, is the, number, the number one thing. Because here's the thing. We're all adults. Right. And if you have made it to adulthood, like, like take ownership of yourself Take ownership of your life and take ownership of your actions because like if and, and then live by that. If you can't live in a way that is open and transparent. Oh, if you're hiding things, if you've got a lot of secrets. Right. Like, what is that all about? I don't. Yeah. What? Why? Why are you doing things that you can't tell people about? And what does that say about what you believe about yourself? Right. And about what you believe about about who you are that you are doing things that then you need to hide. And what, how many times do you wake in the night 
thinking of some shitty thing that you did or that you've done or some shoe that's about to drop because you've been keeping secrets or about somebody who's really important to you maybe even in your life that you're going to lose if they find out what you've been up to. And I see so many people who were otherwise highly functioning, successful, interesting, and, and I think in their hearts good people, but who are doing all kinds of crazy shit behind the scenes. And you're like, why are you doing this to yourself? Yeah, it's looking a little messy over there, man. Right? I just, it's, it's really confusing to me. And as soon as I see that in someone, I, they're out. Like, I'm done. Because I I don't live that way and I won't tolerate people in my life who live that way. And it's because of like the chaos and the pain that it brings. And I don't choose that for myself. I love myself. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) And I think I deserve better than that. So I try to live with integrity and I try to surround myself with people who live with integrity, which isn't to say that I'm a perfect person and I never fuck up and I've never told a lie. but, But I really try to hold that central as a value in my life and I didn't always I didn't used to there's a reason I decided to you know right well, and the, the the benefits of that it's are enormous and they are ongoing Dan Savage is a sex and relationship writer and I've read his column for years big Dan Savage fan but he has something that he calls the campsite rule mm-hmm. and he, he calls it the campsite rule specifically in regard to relationships where one partner is significantly older than the other and he doesn't have a problem with it as long as the older partner leaves the younger partner better than they found them Mm -hmm. and I that kind of struck a chord with me I I remember I was bartending in college we were at a slow point and I was reading the city paper and I read that and I was like oh well I really like that role and and what if you know I just used that and applied it to all of my relationships with people You know, Mm -hmm. I always try and leave people better than I found them. Yeah. You know, and it was like that. I remember when I was growing up, my mom would always tell me we'd go to a public bathroom. She would always expect us to leave the stall cleaner than we found it. Right. Like you clean up in there. And it's so important to bring that idea into, I think, really all of your relationships, because I think particularly if you are an ambitious person. Right. Right. Because, you know, if you're out here trying to make some things happen, you can't do any of that in a vacuum. If there's some kind of something you're trying to accomplish or some kind of ladder that you're trying to climb, there really isn't much of a way to effectively do that without getting some some help from other people. Right. But there is a big difference between, you know, having a, a mutual exchange with someone and using someone right a lot of that is just about exchanging value for value right and it doesn't need to be an exact monetary like value necessarily but in terms of like so for example like we just went to a party over the weekend at a really nice houseboat house Mm -hmm. very cool very cool and you know we showed up and we we brought some vittles to the party We, we came up with some wine mm-hmm. and then Nico showed up and, and he brought a, a bottle of whatever he was drinking. But like how many times do you see people coming to parties and they don't bring anything, but then they consume a bunch of stuff. Right. And then they don't even have the freaking courtesy to put the bottles in the recycling bin. Mm-hmm. Or like, you know, somebody ordered pizza. Did you offer to chip in on that pizza? And then what did you do with your plate? Did you just leave it on the coffee table? You did, you asshole, because I picked it up. Mm-hmm. You know? No, you see that so much where people just take as much as they can from others and, and just accept other people's generosity and hospitality without any kind of a, a thought about it. And and like, what are you... When, when someone does something really nice for you, it doesn't have to be this like constantly transactional exchange. Right. You know, you don't have to like, in fact, I prefer my relationships to not be constantly keeping score because that's exhausting. You know what I mean? But like, like, what are you, you do need to think about what you are bringing to the table. And a lot of that, you know, ties back into this idea of integrity. Right. Exactly. And, you know, like you don't want to be the asshole lingering at the end of the party. Dude, go home. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think I try and be as considerate as possible because it costs nothing to be kind right it it really doesn't take a lot of time or effort to see that there are dishes piling up on the table that people are using so maybe let's just migrate those over to the sink Mm -hmm. you know and if you're a conscientious party goer not just at parties but in life you know let's life's a party right man let's all have a good time 
But like, yeah, I think you should be a conscientious party goer and like focus on that. Yeah. And I mean, I really love this idea of leaving people better than you found them. You know, we all have we all have things to give. We all have gifts to give. And and you can see in other people what they need. And when I approach my life in a way where I am not first thinking of what I need, but first thinking of what others need suddenly the things that I need start to flow toward me. Right. You know, it really is like not to be all woo, but there is an energy shift that comes from that, you know, but people, when they sense that you're there to give and not just take, it changes the whole way that they approach you. And and there are some really beautiful relationships and situations and experiences and opportunities that can grow out of that like mutual exchange. But you've got to show up to the party with that attitude. Right. Because at the end of the day, people remember the way you make them feel. So true. And, you know, in talking about how to live without regrets, do you, how do you make people feel? Right. How do you make people feel? You should think about that. You know, something that I, I've thought about that a lot with this thing with Jody, because what you see, it's, she, she died, what, like two weeks ago almost. And, mm-hmm. and her Facebook page every day is still filled with more people showing, you know, pictures that they've taken. We're thinking of you sharing old pictures of her, you know, sharing her story with people on their timeline, you know, inspiring other people. And and the reason that she has had such an impact on others is because because of the way that she made them feel. She makes she made people feel seen and loved and inspired and like they could do the things that they wanted to do and like they could have the kind of life that they wanted to have. And because she made people feel that way, she will be remembered for a very, very, very long time. And and that's so valuable. Like I always, I remember I heard once and that this really stuck with me is that you die twice in life. And the first time is when you die. And the second time is when the last person who knew your name died. But, right. And that like really floored me the first time I thought about it. But I look at Jody. she's going to live on for a very, very, very long time because she made people feel a certain way. And that's something that people are going to remember. So Jody had a tattoo on her wrist after she, you know, after her cancer went into remission, she got the tattoo, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, she got a survivor's tattoo. And it said, don't go back to sleep. And then it had a paper airplane doing a little daddy loop-de-loop on her wrist. And it, it was a it was a cute tattoo, but it, it was impactful because uh, it came from a poem. And Kel, do you want to read this one? Because I think I'm going to cry again. Okay, I'll try to muscle on through for us. This is a poem by, by Rumi, and it's called Don't Go Back to Sleep. The breezes at dawn have secrets to tell you. Don't go back to sleep. You must ask for what you really want. Don't go back to sleep. People are going back and forth across the door sill where the two worlds touch. The door is round and open. Don't go back to sleep. And I love that one so much because... I think that that's what so much of this is about. It's really easy to live your life in a way where you are asleep, where you are asleep to your own potential, where you are asleep to opportunities, Mm -hmm. where you are asleep to the value and the beauty of the people around you. And I think that, you know, if you can find a way and there's, you know, in in Buddhism, there's the idea of like samsara, you know, and if you can. and, And so like in a way, you can never really hold on to this idea. Like samsara is this idea that you kind of go back and forth between enlightenment and then just sort of like the bullshit of being right. alive and suffering and that sort of thing and that and that you can kind of approach enlightenment asymptotically but that there's always going to be this back and forth flow and that you're going to find yourself back in the bullshit of human drama but that you've got to pull yourself back right and and I think that that's the way it is with you know waking up you know and not going to sleep and that there are going to be days when you're just like fuck and you just you can't see it you know and when you're asleep but you've got to you've got to keep doing the things that'll wake you up whatever those may be Mm -hmm. bucket list items are a great way to wake yourself up to life right because you're finally doing something that you've always wanted to do yes even just setting just set a goal and move towards it whatever that is do you want to lose 10 pounds do you want to finally remodel your guest room I don't know but like set set goals and work towards them and and in the it wakes you up because it's you start to see that you're the way that your actions and moving intentionally towards something can can actually alter reality and can create a new reality for yes. yourself. And that wakes you up, you know? It, it's really helpful. And, and then you start to, it's, it's like a muscle. It gets stronger the more you do it and the more that you demonstrate to yourself that you have the ability to set a goal for yourself and then follow through on it. And so, you know, for me, I know that's something you and I talk about a lot. Like, that's that's what it means to be awake and... 
and I am working very hard every day to not go back to sleep. What's the next item on your bucket list that you would like to knock out? You know, everyone has been talking about, because we're in Europe, everybody loves to go, everybody well, the cool thing about Amsterdam is that, and part of the reason we decided to camp out here for a while, is that it is a great hub. There's all these places that you can go. And I would really like to, people keep talking about skiing season is coming up. Right. I've never really been very good at any of that. But I would like to learn how to snowboard. Okay. All right. And we should probably have another recap episode on our bucket list items because we've done all kinds of cool stuff that we haven't talked about on the podcast. And we've been all kinds of cool places that we haven't really. Yeah, we should talk about that on the next podcast. We've been having some more general episodes just because it kind of felt like the right time. And certainly, you know, I liked the relationship series. We've gotten good feedback on that. Yeah, that was this one isn't the word, but (laughs) right. This how to live without regrets episode, I think, was really important to us both. I told Jody, I promised her that we would do a keg stand in her honor whenever the opportunity presented itself Mm -hmm. and that we would create those opportunities if necessary. So I need to do a, we need to Mm do a keg stand for Jody, and I'll post that. Right. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll post that photo. I would like to go to, there's this place in Turkey, Cappadocia, I want to say, but the photos are incredible and they have these hot air balloon parades Mm. and it's just like the sky is filled with hot air balloons and everyone does it at like sunset and it's just incredible looking so cool so i I plan to do that this year and i'll I'll post about that too yeah very cool so i guess this we just wanted this to be a, a reminder to everyone that you know you can take the wheel in your life don't go back to sleep don't go back to sleep and go out there and make some magic because you don't know how much time you have This has been another episode of the Workationing Podcast. If you like what you've heard here, please consider donating at patreon.com backslash workationing. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com. All proceeds will go towards funding our bucket list items. To keep up with us in real time, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at Workationing. Or on our website at, you guessed it, workationing.com. That's workationing.com. And don't forget to subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. 